love with Pat's two cents. When are you going to get rid of these narcissistic abusers? Why do so many of you hook up with them in the first place? You cannot be that desperate. You cannot be that blind. Listen, God, even when you're not walking with God, will show you all kind of warning signs, all kind of red flags. But the problem is when you are emotionally needy, you tend to turn a blind eye to what's staring you right in your face. I'm talking about the truth. Because what you do is you make the truth apologize. You make the truth come up with a different color. If it's red, it's red. It's not purple, it's not pink, it's red. Quit trying to justify and rationalize somebody else's horrible attitude, somebody else's negative treatment of you. Stop giving excuses for them. So they had it hard. Join the crowd. So is everyone else. Everyone else is not beating up on you, though, are they? No, I just got through watching a movie. And it was a perfect example of how girls get caught up with guys who are, who are abusive. The same way many of you women get caught up with men who are abusive. And many of you men and boys get caught up with girls and women who are abusive. I saw, for example, I was watching Facebook. I'm not on Facebook anymore. I, 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 I shut that down. But Facebook, somebody had their cell phone on and they were watching this couple in high school. And the girl was steadily pounding on the guy. Why didn't you do? I told you, you're so stupid. I don't know why I waste my time with you. You make me so mad. Why do you get me so mad? And she's steadily hitting on him. And he's standing there. He's not walking away. He's standing there taking it. And she's mocking him in front of her friends, disrespecting him. Look how stupid you look. You get on my last nerve. Get out of my face. Get out of my face. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe the man. He wasn't a puny guy, but he kept taking the abuse. What is that? I don't get it. Okay. Then in the movie that I saw, this girl, she hooks up with this guy and he spots her a mile away. Oh, he spotted her. This guy was a perfect example of narcissistic extreme. And he started dating her. And the first thing, the first signal, it was so obvious, was he did not, when they were studying together, he got very upset when a guy came to join them and say, hey, how you guys doing? Blah, blah, blah. He tells him, why don't you, you know, you know, get lost or something. He said something very rude. He brushed him off. Why don't you beat it? Something like that. Well, then the girl looks at him like, you know, that wasn't necessary. Why did you? And then her two friends come before she gets a chance to really deal with it. They sit at the table. Now, these are two girls. And they're like, hey, what are you doing after so-and-so? Let's hook up, blah, blah, blah. And he gets up. He doesn't say hello. He doesn't say goodbye. He doesn't say kiss my butt. He doesn't say anything. He storms back in the back of the library where the books are. Now, instead of her saying, come on, let's go. I can't deal with that kind of rudeness. And going with her friends, she jumps up, does not say anything to the girls, and storms behind him. What's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> I wouldn't have even done it. I would have, that would have been the end of that. It would have been over right there. But then it gets worse. He tries to explain to her, I only want to be with you. 
You hear those words, you run, you cut it right then. It's over. I only want to be with you. What do you need with all your friends? You got me now. No, don't. Don't. That is a definite danger signal right there. She's trying to figure out what he's talking about. Well, those are my friends. He grabs her shoulders and body slams her up against one of the bookcases. She's still standing there waiting for an apology. Of course, he apologizes and he explains. And he wants, are you okay? I mean, really, are you okay? Come on. He didn't care. Let me tell you how much he didn't care. After that happened, the next thing that happens is he gets angry at her and he hits her. He hits her because she's at a party and a guy walks up to her to say hi. And he grabs her hand and snatches her out of the party and she's going with him instead of saying, you guys help me. I think he's going to hurt me. No, she goes with him like a dummy, covering for him. He grabs her outside. He's beating her and takes her and forces her into his car. <coughs> Now, none of the friends intervene. That's another thing I have an issue with. What I'm trying to tell you is, if that can happen that early in a so-called relationship that wasn't even a couple of days or a week old, imagine what it would be like once he married her. But see, it didn't get there. And this is why I tell you it's dangerous from the get-go because that thing didn't last no more than maybe several months. And before you knew it, after she broke up with him, he just wanted to talk. Come on, let's just go for a ride. Dumb did he dum dum got into the into the truck. He drove her off somewhere. If I can't have you, nobody can. Bam. That was her last breath. He wraps her up in all kind of mess, ties bricks to her, dumps her in the lake. High school kids, do you hear me? We're not even talking seniors. You have to understand, this is not a game. See, I witnessed it myself. My landlord, was an ugly, old, grumpy fool. And his wife treated him like a king. She treated him like royalty. She was a pretty, pretty woman with pretty long hair. He had a car in the dead of winter. Would he drive her to work? No. He would drive himself wherever he had to go. If she had to go shopping, she had to go by bus. She had to go she had to walk. She had to catch the L train to go to work. She worked all kind of hours. And then she gave him a five-course breakfast in the morning, gave him a five-course meal at night, served and waited on him hand and foot. And when something, when there wasn't enough salt on the greens, I watched Brother Man beat her down to the ground. And I ran upstairs begging my father to call the police. I was mad at my father because he wouldn't do it. And he tried to explain to me what you don't understand, Pat. And this is what never made sense to me to this day. What you don't understand, Pat, is when the cops come, and we've seen it with this same couple, when the cops come, she stops them from arresting him, even though she can barely walk even when she has to go to the hospital from all his beating. She makes excuses for him, and she will not let anybody penalize him for mistreating her that way. And then he told me that's the first time I heard the expression, Patty, you learn in life not to get between a dog and his bone. I understood what he meant. But I could not understand her mindset. How could she feel that way? How could she? She must not think anything of herself. What is this? 
Stop being a doormat. God did not call you to be a doormat. I don't care if it's verbal abuse, physical abuse, psychological abuse, total neglect. God did not call you to that. That's not a marriage. That's slavery. God did not call you men to be slaves, poop butts, peons. He did not call you to be used and abused. He did not call you women to do it either. Please wake up. God is love, not violence. He is love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And you will see what love really is. Love does not insist on having its own way, my way or the highway. Love does not uh, rule and control. Love is not mean and cruel. Love is not insulting and, and, and debasing. Love is not disrespectful. Mm. Love is not domineering. Love is not jealous. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is long suffering. Oh, oh y'all need to read it. That's all. You just need. Many people don't know what real love is. But once you experience God, baby, and you experience His love, you have no more question. Anyway, God bless you. And I hope many of you wake up before it's too late.